is the weekly watch list and today we are reacting to Bridgerton Season 3 Part 2 Episode 7 and 8 The Season Finale Alright Let's get into it Hello, welcome back to my channel I'm Kendra And we are finally at Episodes 7 and 8 of season three of Bridgerton, featuring my favorite couple, which is of course Colin and Penelope. <laughs> I have a lot to say about what I saw last time. I have to take a whole break. I have to take a a, a, a break that lasted more than just a nap. It was actually a whole day. I, I, I needed to process um, and edit and everything. And while I was editing and like rewatching the footage, I just a lot of things popped off for me so like I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my full sort of like reaction review of the full series um, and these next two episodes that we're gonna watch um, until after this because I think I have a lot to say um, so I'm just gonna save it till the end so make sure you stick around for that um, because frankly you know and I do try to I obviously try to avoid spoilers but I, I try to not allow the sort of discourse to influence what I'm going to think about whatever it is that I'm going to watch. And I just have to say that I have seen a lot of really negative things and just people being like so disappointed, for example, in like, you know, the book adaptation part of things, you know, wanting to see more parts of the book come to life, which I guess I can't like really argue with that because there are some really great parts in the book that um you know got sort of like rearranged or just aren't in this but I just find the way that Luke and Nicola bring Colin and Penelope to life so enjoyable that I'm not even really checking for that like that you know what I'm saying I consider the show and the book to be two separate entities because they're two separate creative minds behind those things you know the book was written the way it was written when it was written and this adaptation is from Shondaland and Netflix and there's whole teams multiple teams behind the way um this show was adapted from those books there, there's a there's a, a whole showrunner and a whole you know multiple producers like everybody has a say including the directors including the actors you know what I mean a costume might change the way things have to play out you know what I'm saying so like I come from a production background like I work in production so I completely understand and I'm a writer so I completely understand how the how my original vision could end up not really resembling what I originally thought but is still something that I'm happy with or something that I can live with as a creator because you know I put it in the hands of my team or you know the client stepped in and had something to say like that that's the shit that's the world that's what we're doing here this is Netflix come on I guess I suppose I understand the complaint about um Colin and Penelope not getting enough screen time and you know again I haven't seen these next two episodes so I don't know but what I'm getting of them is so good and so well performed and so intense that I don't care. Um, and as someone who's never watched the show before um, and is still sort of in the middle of completing the books, I really appreciate getting to visit these side characters. I really appreciate getting to see you know who they are um, as they have developed from their previous seasons that includes Kate and Anthony that includes Eloise that includes you know the Mundridges and I think what that means is that there seems to be a tradition of if you see what well, well with the exception of season one's couple Simon and uh, Daphne it seems to be that if you see one couple's main season you know happen that in the following seasons you'll get to follow their progress and see how they're doing from time to time so it stands to reason that they'll make room for Colin and Penelope in future seasons the way that they've made room for Kate and Nancy and the other couples that's that's what they're gonna do that's what you should expect that's how it works that's how it works 
I think there's a lot of bandwagon hopping and stuff and like you know I'm, not, I'm trying not to read too, too much or to absorb too much because I don't want to spoil myself but I get the general sense that people are not feeling great about things and I don't know what the hell y'all talking about I'm having a great time that last two episodes oh my god you see I'm talking too much I'm talking too much I'm so excited I'm talking too much I said I was just gonna get to the damn reaction and here I am talking too much okay I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start episode 7 and 8. I'm sad because it's about to be over and I know I'm going to rewatch this like a thousand times. But I'm also super excited because I just can't wait to see how um, Luke and Nicola are going to play out the drama that's coming with him finding out about Lady Whistledown. Oh my god. Okay. <sighs> Y'all ready? Buckle up. Let us react to... <laughs> Season 3 of Bridgerton, Episode 7 and 8. Oh. God. A lady whistle that. Call it. Uh, Do not try to deny it. I heard you. Please, man. All of the lies. Oh, Colin. You have told me. Oh, look, please. I knew something was wrong. Stupidly, I blamed myself as if... As if I was undeserving of your love, I would never forgive you. Oh no, babe. Okay, his his anger is understandable. Oh, there's a storm in that tree again. Whenever there's trouble, there's a storm coming. She's about to tell on Cressida. gentle reader. Oh wait, no. I fear no reproach, as now you know I write to you from one of the most reputable houses in Mayfair. Ew, I don't like this. I don't like this. It is no Lady Violet Bridgerton praises love matches above all else. Several of her children have had rather rushed engagements. Perhaps the family confuses love with lust. This doesn't sound like her at all. A few of them may be of dubious parentage. The lies she writes. Another whistle down. <gasps> uh, Gregory, let me see it. Oh, competing whistle downs, bitch! Dearest gentle reader. Yes! It seems someone has been impersonating me. This author <laughs> is not interested in judging what one does out of desperation. Gossip as I might. I always tell the truth, and I cannot tolerate a lie. Cressida Cowper, this author is not. <laughs> the true lady who is down is always paying attention. Something that I believe Miss Cowper should try to do a little more. Nice try, babe. You got me for a minute. Cressida Cowper, this author is not. Yours truly. Lady Whistledown. That was awesome. I don't know what people are complaining about. This is awesome. Vindication for Lady Whistledown, but ooh, Penelope, baby, what you gonna do about your marriage? Your bosom looks amazing, though. No one can take that away from you. There's a saying that goes, the sky is the darkest right before sunrise, which means you gotta go through the shit before you can wash away the mud from your boots. <laughs> Hey, Lord Kill Martin. Anyway, once again, Eloise, I want to like you, but I'm just. How long have you known? Oh, shit. Oh, I found Colin her. wasted no time. I've been trying to make her tell you. You should have told me yourself. And you should have told me you were in love with my best friend before you tripped into the drawing room. Not the room same. Not the same. <laughs> tripped. I have been trying to make her tell you. And then I thought, why break your heart as well? Her sheet has been fair this year. Are you forgetting what she wrote about me at the start of the season? She was mad, Colin. Did you forget why? Did you forget what you said last season? <sighs> He's so sensitive. I've already forgiven her. I want to. Do you think you can? I think you should consider yourself uncommonly lucky you have never been in love. Like, I get it, dude. He's sensitive. He's a sensitive dude. That's what you gotta deal with when you're dealing with emo men. The you know, when they get their little feelings hurt. Will you at least look at me? My mother was curious about our not seeing each other recently, and I did not want to arouse suspicions. Are you going to call off the wedding? I am a man of honor, and we were interviewed. Perhaps that was another part of your plan. No, no. I did not mean to entrap you, Colin. I loved. Are you going to stop publishing? I do not know. I know she's scared to admit it. Let us get through this wedding, and then we will decide what this marriage will be. 
tense. This is tense. Lord Anderson has come to call. Hey, yo! Oh, Ooh, there is a UST Lady here. Bridgerton, it is good to see you. You as well, Lord Anderson. UST. Oh. <laughs> Not another lip sugar mm. moment. Do you think perhaps the two of us could explore something together? I will not know if I'm ready for that, especially because I'm not the only one who's a fair Ooh. need order. <laughs> real! That's real shit. Get your shit together, bro. Stop leading with your breeches. Why did we have to write such cruel things about the Bridgertons, Mama? Bridgertons so <laughs> often feature in Whistledown that it would have been strange not to mention them. Didn't hurt? Bringing them down a peg. Perhaps I was wrong to turn on Eloise. She is the one person who's ever shown me true friendship. Have I not raised you to know that in this world, it is every person for themselves, especially amongst women? Is this the wrong advice? Yes, you have. I could use a moment on my own. Is everything well? Is everything well with you? Avoiding the question. <laughs> Benedict is an easy rider. He just rolls with the punches. Okay, I'm starting to like Benedict more. Especially now that he's more interesting, you know what I mean? Hello, bisexual representation. Colin! Girl, what are you doing? Genevieve Colin found out. I'm relieved. It's been painful carrying this secret. But he hates me for it. And he has every right to. I do not know that I'm worthy of him. You have made some ill-considered choices in your time. You're a girl who did not know her own power. But does that justify it? No. All one can do is be true to one's choices and look yes. forward. Yes, absolutely. There's no such thing as true love without first embracing... Hello! <gasps> Ooh! Is this from the trailer! What are you doing out here? No, in fact, do not answer that. It is clear I found you in the midst of some secret dealings. And what secret dealings have I found you in the midst of? What right do you have to ask me that? I realise how much damage I have done and I am so, so sorry for it. What were you thinking when you wrote about Eloise? I was trying to protect her. From what, girl? I realise now how misguided I was. And when you wrote about Miss Thompson? Ruining her. I thought I was protecting Ooh. you. Then you should have told me to my face. I know. I should have told you. Myself, there are so many things. I should have done myself and now with the confidence. You've helped me find this year. I'm Listen finally to our Colin, please. I let you talk so much about my journal as if I were to be this great writer. Colin, I meant everything I said about your writing. You're putting yourself in danger being out here tonight, and you've been putting yourself in danger you living mad. this double life all along. I have been careful. You have been foolish. Colin, I can take care of myself. Then what good am I to you? Colin, I love you. I love you. That's really what he needed to hear. Yes, it is. Yes, Colin. Oh, oh, I see why they call him Fingerington. Oh, shit. I shall see you tomorrow. Damn. There's somebody here ride with them. Damn. It's so interesting because in the book, he was jealous of her writing. And he didn't really admit it until after they made up, I think. He kind of alluded to it here, but... Well, there you are. Oh, oh please ask them for advice. Oh, uh, what am I? Chopped liver? What are you both doing here? Your mother... Mm, she need help with you. I love what she's wearing. What is going on with you and Penelope? I do not wish to unburden myself to you two with your perfect marriage. It is not our business. Yeah, okay. Ooh, she classy. Every one of us has secrets or have made mistakes once or twice in our lives. There is a reason Penelope has been so dear to you for so long. And you cannot let one mistake define your marriage. Mm, there you go. I will see you at the church tomorrow. Oh, she makes such a great big sister. Three raw eggs in the morning. There you go. Finally, some useful advice. Ugh, Colin, come on, man. Forgive her already. You know you love her. Ooh, Penelope. So, they're not gonna make up before the wedding? Oh, baby, please don't have a panic attack. Are you ready? Oh, they're playing yellow. I recognize this song because I'm old as shit. And I remember when this song came out. Oh, she looks so beautiful. <gasps> 
<laughs> yes, you know you love that girl. I, Colin Bridgerton, take thee, Penelope Featherington, to be my wedded wife. I, Penelope Featherington, take thee, Colin Bridgerton, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. With this ring, I thee wed. With my body, I thee worship. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Go to him. Could we get away from here? I have spent so long clinging to walls like this, but I should like to dance with my husband in the light that's of day. That's beautiful, Penelope. Yes. Go, girl. Very well. Oh, God. I love them. I love them. They could not possibly make me love them more. Are they, like, starting a tradition or something? Yeah. I feel like this song sounds familiar, but please don't ask me to identify it because I cannot. Lady Bridgerton, thank you so much for having me. Oh, Lord Anderson, I am. Please, glad Anthony, you have joined mind me. your business. <laughs> he oversteps. Oh, I think. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> Her Majesty the Queen. I'm just about to kiss her. Does she guess? Everyone who is not a Bridgerton may what? go. Penelope, where the are you going? Penelope, you are a Bridgerton. Uh, no. Come on, man. <laughs> Lady Danbury's like, Argh. she f knows. Step forward. Whoa. Hey, do it. Do it. I speak of Whistledown. Only when the Cowper girl publishes lies about this very family. That is what roused her from her hiding place. And why? Clearly because she is one of you. Hold your tongue another night. I shall loosen it soon enough. Do you know what it is like to have nowhere in the world you can truly be yourself? Tell him! Well, the only choice women have is to conceal the parts of ourselves the world will not accept. Mm, she having her Barbie moment, girl. I am whistled out. I will not oh. change that. I cannot. Oh, that. Colin, yes you can, yes you can! Colin, it is our wedding night. Oh. I shall sleep on the sofa tonight. <laughs> Who said yes? It's going down. It's going down. It's going down. It's about to go down. I've been thinking about your offer. <laughs> Houston, we have lived off. Bro, I feel like I shouldn't. Like, this is naughty. Ooh, woo, woo, woo. My boss at the last place that I worked used to print for her said that she was a redhead, though. What else did he tell you? Oh! Shh! Oh! Colin. Good morning. I am off to Bridgeton House for breakfast. But my mother is coming. I'll give you and your mother some privacy. Oh, you do not have to leave. I wish to. You have a visitor in the drawing room. Good morning, Mama. Cressida. Oh, shit! To the esteemed Lady Whistledown. I know your secret. Whatever you think you know, you're incorrect. Now I wish for you to leave. No one would ever suspect you, as you are so very forgettable. You are going to pay me double the Queen's reward, or I will tell everyone of your true identity. Lady Featherington, think of your daughter's love of the written word. I think of how she is so easily overlooked. I think of how all those she views as enemies end up humiliated in print. She is the true oh! Do enjoy your morning, ladies. Yo, uh, my respect level for Chris is a kind of just went up a little bit. Penelope, what are you doing here? Certainly we should not be having this discussion in front of Miss Bridgerton. She knows everything as well. Wonderful. And why do we all suddenly know that we know? Because Chris had discovered my secret. How did she discover you? I am not sure. It does not matter how. If she knows, we must prevent her from revealing it. I'm not asking for your help. I merely wanted to be honest with it you. It is not up to you what we do. If Miss Cowper spreads this gossip, it will besmirch our Bridgerton name. And I will not stand for anyone blackmailing my wife. I can pay her. All this time? You're not paying Miss Cowper a single penny. 
But, Colin, it is my... Then perhaps you will pay her, Mr uh, Bridgerton. Uh, no, he cannot. No one is paying her. And what do you propose we do? Bring her to see this cause of action is ruinous for everyone involved. It is the only way forward. I mean, I, I guess I'm glad to see his protectionist, but I don't know that he handled that well. Shush. Whoa, whoa, yo, ho, ho! Okay. <laughs> I need some tea. Mr. Bridgerton. I take it your mother does not know about your blackmailing my wife? I no longer trust anyone. I must feel terribly lonely. Poor Mr. Bridgerton. Traveling the continent, seeing the great sights of the world, as only a man can do. Hmm. You are right. It is a privilege to travel. But this last year, I found myself yearning to hear word from home, from Penelope. Why won't you tell Penelope back. that? Back from her. It felt as if everyone was busy with their lives without a need for me in them. So I attempted to pardon myself with no needs of his own. Well, at least he's finally explaining it to somebody. I would recommend. Mr. Bridgerton, I'm confused. It seems you've come for me to pay you sympathy, but I'm the one who is meant to be paid. I have come for your mercy. Penelope is no villain. Her readers are willing to pay. I think you misunderstand why she you wants the money. You do sound as if you hate Whistledown. You sound as if you are jealous of her. No, I'm not. My point is, there is Whistledown. Point, baby. And then there is Penelope. Her column has reflected the cruelty around her. A cruelty, I imagine, you have felt too. Uh, I love you, Colin, but baby, I don't know. I, I haven't want that money. You have until the Dankworth Finchball to pay me. Or well, the following morning. I will tell everyone. Colin can be remarkably compelling when he wants to be. It's not him I'm worried about. Cressida has her reasonable moments. I just hope today is one. Did you truly like her? Or did you befriend her simply to punish me? Perhaps the very initial befriending was tinged with just the tiniest bit of petting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I have failed. And she wants double now. Why do you not have that son? There is more. She requires you use your column to restore her reputation. It seems I have made everything worse. Oh, this is my fault entirely. I have the funds. I will have to invent some kind of a lie. We will keep her identity shielded. This is not looking good. This is still going on. Can y'all like take a break? God. Okay. You are both adults. You may do as you wish. It is not as though I asked. Your permission. Oh! What they talking about? I heard about this. I heard about some shit. I know my father was a good man. And that you have been a very good friend. And that is all I need to know. <laughs> and my brother is a good man. And you are a good friend. And that is all I need to know as well. <laughs> <laughs> You make me cry and then you show me nudes, resources and shit. Y'all are crazy with the whiplash. Especially party. No, not more, not more. Please stop. Again, again. Henry dropped again. <laughs> Colin, I need you to forgive your wife, bro. I mean, I'm happy that you're going to protect her with your money, but can you, like, wrap your arms around her, please? <laughs> You want to make up with her, don't you? I mean, she's basically doing everything you love, just standing there. I only need a blanket for the city. Of course. His little feelings is hurt, child. <laughs> he looks miserable! I my mother before your sister's wedding. Go after her! Oh, come on, man! What's he reading? Oh, he's smiling again! Lady Featherington, Walter... Walter Dundas Esquire, I do remember. I take it you're here to congratulate us on my daughter's marriage into one of the most esteemed and respected families of the Tom. Regrettably, no. I have not come on happy business. Though some have told me they do find release from deception a comforting feeling. The money you inherited from your Aunt Petunia. I know your funds came from Jack Featherington's fraudulent activities. 
And I believe the Crown will agree that the Featherington title should be transferred to a more scrupulous family. Ah. You stole from them! Uh, you humiliated them. What you and I have done is not different. What you have done is a crime. I did what I had to do to protect this family. Who were you protecting with your collar? Myself! Oh, from whom? How was I to raise daughters when all my life I was taught that all power comes from a man? What you have done, you have done entirely on your own. It is a great regret of mine that I've overlooked you for so long. Perhaps there were other ways, but at the time I, I could not see them. What the Lady Whistledown write about our disgrace when I am exposed? She will write whatever I like her to. That is a great power. If we survive this round, we must do better. I take thee to be my lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold, from this day forward, <coughs> for richer and for poorer. I take thee to be my lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward till death do us part. Don't be nervous. What was it? I cannot ask you to lie to your brother on my behalf. I will not let my lie spread any further than they already have. Then how am I meant to help you? By loving me. It is not what you do for me that makes me love you. It is your kindness. Just being you is enough. Colin, I do not need you to save me. I just need you to stand by me, to hold me. Me. I want very much to do those things. Well, what is it that restrains you? Miss Cowper still hangs over us, and as long as you live with this secret, there will always be something between us. I know. Is she gonna go to the Queen? Ooh, she gonna unmask herself on her own shit? A letter for you, Your Majesty. Oh, she done wrote a letter! <gasps> she done wrote a letter to the Queen! Oh, please, God, let this be the night that they make up. It's We're running out of time here. Your Majesty! Forgive us, Your Majesty. We did not think you would accept our invitation. <laughs> it is not your invitation that brings me here. Cease playing. As a result of my tireless search, placing her in an impossible situation, I received a letter from Lady Whistledown. Asking to address you all herself before I pass my judgment. So I turn the floor over now to the scribe herself. Her. Ah, look at look, look, look at Damer, she do. Hello, or sh should I say, dearest gentle readers, I know it is no laughing matter. What I have done. I never thought anyone would take my writing seriously. No one has ever taken any part of me seriously. I wrote about all of you because I was captivated by you. I suddenly felt as if I had a life. I had power. And for anyone in this room who has ever had a taste of that, they should know it can be intoxicating. But I see now how much courage it takes to live a life out in the open. And to know, regardless of the outcome, one always has worth. All of us talk, we gossip. Gossip is information. It forges bonds. That is why I am so very grateful to our queen. If she affords me the chance to continue, I mean to aim my quill more responsibly. That is my repentance and my plea. She seems humbled, but we will be watching that she remains so. What is life without a little gossip? Yeah! So y'all can't say shit because the queen said to let whistle down do her thing. Now, Molly, the bugs! Girl, what? She got pardoned by the queen. Can she please be pardoned by her husband? You cannot tolerate a lie. Lady Damry. The last column. From the books! Oh my god, I was hoping they would talk. When she assumed Whistledown was a Bridgerton protecting their own, but I know the family well enough to know it was not one of them. I look forward to your next edition. Hmm? <laughs> we can now tell that solicitor your money came from my writing. 
will have no recourse. Time for us to do better. Please, please, please. I need it, please. Ever since I found out you were whistled down, I've done everything I can to try to separate you from her. I went back and read all of the letters you have sent me. Okay, good. Yes, Colin. Your yes. Letters have always been the ones I'm most eager to read. You are her. Mm. There is no separating you. From yes, he gets it. And after seeing you speak today, well, I would not want to. That was bloody. Yes. Yes, it was. I have been envious. Mm. And now I simply cannot believe how lucky I am to stand by your He's side. He's such a sweetheart. And oh soak up even a little up. bit of your light. Finally. My only purpose in life is to love a woman as great as you. And I will be a very fulfilled man indeed. That is the Colin we know and love. I love you. Yes, we do love. I mean, I know you, you do, are but a I... good man, Mr. Bridge. Yes, he is. I love you. Will you please do me the honor of joining me on the Yay! dance floor? Yay! Oh, he looks happy! Eloise has asked to accompany us. If that does not burden you, my lord. That is wonderful news. <laughs> and thankfully, my cousin has finally arrived to complete our travel party. Oh. Michaela Sterling, I caution you. Every sort of detail John has spoken about me is a lie. <laughs> I am Francesca Bridgerton Kilmartin. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. You didn't know your, your cousin was married, though. My is the bisexual catch? Yes! To, oh, to protect yes. any risque couplings, though I have heard whispers of a few. Ooh. I will miss you. <laughs> Only until next year. Mm. Do you think Mama would ever let me miss her masquerade ball? Mm, masquerade nice. ball! I will be there. Oh, he's sad now. This author knows better than to make any predictions about what the future may hold. Oh no, it's almost over. She looks happy finally. Goodbye. Oh! <laughs> they all had babies! How did they all have babies? How many times did Joe? Before y'all get married. Your father is always trying to distract the clever word and a beguiling smile. You think my smile is beguiling? <laughs> oh, she's the only one who had a boy. Damn! I cannot have written my book without the help of Philomena's oh, oh, auntie Penelope. Yeah, book. <laughs> and hopefully, dear reader, you will stay on to enjoy them with me as we begin this next part of our journey. Yours truly, Penelope Bridgerton. That is so sweet. Man, she looked good in that dress. Y'all better go bone right now. Make another son. Oh, it's over. No. I don't want this to be over. That was so good. I really enjoyed that. I'm going to give these two episodes and the season an overall 9 out of 10 rating. Let's talk about it. So I have a lot to say. So I think my overall score is, um, yeah, it's how I feel. It is how this show has made me feel. Um, I think that that was really good. It was everything I expect from a production from Shonda Rhimes. Um, and it was, in my opinion, like an enjoyable adaptation from the book. Did they serve everything? No, they didn't serve everything, but I don't think that they needed to. I think the story that they told held its own, um, as it should have. Uh, I have a lot more to say about, you know, you know what actually it might serve for a like a separate video because i just i really need to get this out i need to get out how i feel about you know some of the criticisms that i've seen including some of my own criticisms i just think that overall there's some things that people are kind of missing in in not not missing as in they're not noticing it but missing as in they are interpreting it in a way, um, in my humble opinion, that the writers and producers and actors 
did not intend for these things to be interpreted. And I think some decisions that were made, all of the factors are not being taken into consideration. And I just feel that everyone has their own personal wants. Everyone has their own personal sort of, you know, vision of what they would want to see. But I think the point is, ultimately, is that the people who created this show have their own vision as well. And they are the people who hold the keys and pull the strings. You know, yes, they present this to a, the public, you know, so that the public will view it and hopefully like it. But if you don't like it, that doesn't mean that it's bad. It means that you don't like it. There are so many wonderful ways that this show's writing shows itself to be very solid writing and the character development shows itself to be a lot better than I think people give it credit for simply because they don't like what they see. Um, this, is a, this is a melodrama. This is a Shonda Rhimes production. This, this is the same lady who did uh, Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder. There has to be drama. There has to be conflict. There has to be characters acting in ways that we are not going to like. You know, I didn't necessarily like that we spent so much time exploring Benedict and his, you know, sexuality and his want to be free. <clears throat> Because I think a lot of that could be served in his own story. And I would much rather have spent more time with Colin and Penelope, at the very least, um, you know, discovering a lot of the things that sort of happened, like in the last few minutes, um, over time. But that is not something that's going to make me say that this show was a disappointment or a letdown, that it was bad. I just think we as a society right now especially if you're perpetually online we are so addicted to extremism um and entitlement quite frankly that we just snap judge um and if we if all of our hopes and dreams are not serviced then we decide that it's bad it ain't good and we don't want it and i just think that that is doing a disservice to the art that is being made this art is not being made to please everyone it is not there is a vision that is being carried out that is being carried out not only with the insights and the hard work of the creative team that is putting this vision out there, but there are other stakeholders. There's an entire network. There's Netflix. There's Shonda Land, Shonda Rhimes. There's what those people want to see in this. And I'm sure the actors had some input. Nicola had input on whether or not she would be nude and how much of that she would she would endure and, and so did Luke. Like the, these people all have a stake in this. They all have an investment in this collective vision that is not yours. Whether you like that or not, it's not your vision. It's their vision. So I might say something that you know I the, the, maybe this is gonna ruffle some feathers wrong but like I think people should just really take stock of that before they just start lobbying all of this very passionate criticism um, especially when I, I'm sorry I'm a writer myself and I work in production and there's a reason that I am not in a, sh in a, in a writer's room the shit is not easy I would love to see some of these critics out here put their own shows together and adapt their own literary works you know um, I, that's not to say that a fan of something should not be allowed to criticize it because I think that obviously you should but I do think that just some consideration and some balance is always always in order I have criticisms of this show but I would I can't I can't call it bad writing because it's not. I've seen bad. We've all seen bad writing and that is not bad writing. That is maybe some issues with pacing. That is a, a choice was made. Choices were made that y'all don't know really could pay off later. Just the way that we saw so much time given to Kate and Anthony, we could see that time devoted to Colin and Penelope in the next season, which will take them another 
one or two years to develop let's not forget you know it's not like they just rushed this They're, these were all considerate choices and they made what they thought was the best product at the, at the time so I think that a lot of these snap judgments may with a reviewing or you know some more consideration come around but you know an opinion is an opinion and everybody's entitled to their opinion so you can have that opinion if you like but I strongly disagree I strongly disagree um, I really enjoyed this yes I did want Colin to pull his head out of his ass a lot sooner than he did eight episodes um, does seem like a cr crammed space you know maybe one thing they might consider is expanding that number of episodes I don't think they really need to commit to that because the, the hunger is there the appetite is there people want to see their favorite couple so I don't think they have to worry about that but beyond that and a few other nitpicky things which I'm really considering making a separate video for maybe do a comment I did a review video for the ones who live I'm considering doing that for um, this season of Bridgerton uh, because I have a lot more to say there were so many things that I so appreciated and so many things that I do want to talk about in terms of criticism that I might have so if you uh, want to see that please leave a like on the video or a comment below and let me know what you might want to see me reflect on because there's also a lot of stuff that I have to cut out you know um, just so that I can avoid copyright uh, claims and also so that I can keep this down to an enjoyable you know uh, you know about 30 minutes of um, reaction time so yeah just let me know uh, if you guys want to see that because I think I'm gonna do it I really enjoyed this ride and I am poised and ready for more Bridgerton. I'm going to go backwards like I keep saying um, and so next look out for uh, subscribe so you can see me react to season two to see Kate and Anthony's story because I so adore them. I adore Kate. I'm Antony is, uh, you know, what, what does she say? You are wearying tonight. Antony is a little wearying, uh, but I, I can tell that he adores his wife. So I, I really want to see their story. And also, I think it was their story that Denai Guerrera, um, who stars as Michonne um, in The Walking Dead and The Ones Who Live, borrowed from so she could write one of the most successful episodes of that uh, show uh, between her and Rick. So I, I'm really excited about that. Um, so please, if you like what you see, please like the video. Please feel free to let me know what you all thought about this season. And you know, if you don't agree with me, let's let's talk it out. Maybe in my review video I can address um, some of the things that you have to say. So, like, subscribe, uh, and there will be more Bridgerton coming your way soon. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. I gained so many followers, and I'm so happy about that. Uh, so let's keep going. Yeah! Okay. I'm with you. Peace.